COVID, I, that was my job. My job was just traveling around the world doing festivals and, and performing. And, and I performed at the Fringe here many, many times. And that, that was my job. And, uh, and uh, I, did, I did the Edinburgh Fringe, the biggest fringe there is in the world, a couple of years ago. And I, I did three shows a day for the Edinburgh Fringe. And uh, I did the shows that I've done here before. It's like 26 days, three shows a day. It's, it's a real like marathon of a festival. And I, I did the show that I did here a couple of years ago. Uh, it's called Pretending Things Are a Cock. Uh, that is traveling, traveling around the world, make everything my cock. Yeah, that's a show and a book and a calendar and, uh, I, I, and a birthday card. And uh, I did another show called Fire in the Meth Lab. Uh, that is a show about my brother becoming a meth head and going to jail. It's a pretty lighthearted tale, that one. And, uh, <laughs> resonated really well with Perth audiences. And, uh, <laughs> I did a third show every day of the Edinburgh Fringe for 26 days. I did a third show, and guess what the third show they asked me to do was? Kids show! <laughs> kids show! They thought the meth guy and the cop guy should do a kids show. And I thought, I can do a kids show, it's easy. Kids, they're just like little drunk adults. I've dealt with drunk adults before. Just don't swear, just don't swear. You can do a kids show. I did 26 days of a kids show in Edinburgh. And my first show, I walked out on the stage, and it was always about 300 kids, not brain, just 300 kids were there. And I walked out onto the stage, and I started doing my show, and immediately, this little kid just stood up in the middle of the audience, walked through the audience, climbed up onto the stage with me here, and just started eating a bag of chips. Just went, yep, this right, my chips here on stage with you in this show. And I thought, fuck, this has never happened in a, in a drunken show before. This kid's just eating his chips, just looking up at me like this. I've never had anyone look up at me before, but this kid's just eating his chips in front of me. And I thought, no, no, John, you're a professional. You just do your job. So I continued with my show. And I got about halfway through the show, and another kid what? stood up, just climbed around the audience, climbed up onto the stage with me from the side this time, and just started pushing his back against mine like this. And this kid's just still eating his chips, just looking up at me. This kid's just pushing his back against mine. And finally, I look at this kid and just say, what are you doing? And he says, I'm only seven, and I'm just as tall as you. <laughs> The biggest laugh I got in 26 shows was that kid saying that to the audience. There's nothing worse than 299 kids just going, ha 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 ha, look at the small adult. There's nothing that brings up childhood bullying and a bunch of seven year olds just laughing at you saying, small adult. <laughs> this kid's pushing his back against me, this kid's eating his chips. This is my first fucking show. And I think, no, 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 just keep on going, John, you're a professional, just keep on going. And get about three quarters of the way through the show, this kid's still on the stage, this kid's still here, and another kid just notoriously stands up in front of everyone, walks around the side, and there's a big speaker stack where my voice is coming out of. This kid just fucking climbs the speaker stack, like fucking Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, just scales the speaker stack next to me, and he finds the speaker that my voice is coming out of, and just screams into the speaker, No! Just screams, No! Into the speaker where my voice is coming out of. This is my first fucking show. And I think kids, they're not like drunk adults. They just want it to be about them. They're like really drunk adults. They just want it to be about them. So when I just start talking to the kids in every other show, so my second show, I just say, hey, give me a joke. Give me a joke. And in my second show, this little ginger kid just raises his hand quite gingerly. And I say, yes. And he says, knock, knock. Yeah. Europe. And then he just sits down like a little fucking psychopath. Just, 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 just like, ah, he just called you a poo. Second biggest laugh in 26 shows of me calling this kid a poo. 26 fucking shows of this I have to do. And I do all of these shows and they're all just fucking ridiculous and crazy. And the, and the only reason you do the Edinburgh Fringe is so you might get selected to tour. You might get to tour around the UK. And that year, my show was selected. My show was selected, Fire in the Meth Lab. This guy came up to me after the show and he said, we would like to tour this show. And I was so chuffed, I couldn't believe that he would like to tour this show. And he gave me a train ticket. He gave me the place where I was to be touring to. And after the show, I was just so proud. I couldn't believe that my show had been selected. And, and so I got this train to this little place called Easingwold. Now, does anyone know where Easingwold is? The population of Easingwold is smaller than the population of this room right now. <laughs> it's this little tiny town outside of Yorkshire. I'm like, no. You're a professional, you've been chosen to tour, do your job, you do, do your show in Easingwold. So I show up to my venue, and, and, uh, and guess what my venue is? You want to have a guess? Pub. Pub would make sense, wouldn't it? Nursing home! <laughs> Nursing home! And I think, is that a cool name for a comedy club or something like that? No, it's a real North 
nursing home. So I just show up to this nursing home and I say to the nurse at the start, I say, is there a comedy club nearby here? And she says, no, we've been expecting you. <laughs> so I have to do my show Fire in the Meth Lab to a bunch of elderly people in a nursing home. And I need to stipulate now, this is a nursing home. Not an old folks home, not a retirement village, no sexy old ladies like Golden Girls, none of that. This is a nursing home where 15 of the audience are just pulled out in front of me and I just have to do my show in their eating area. And I think, okay, you're a professional, you've been chosen to tour, just do your job, John. And so I start to do my show. And as soon as I start talking, there's an old lady sitting in the very front row. She just thinks I'm a visiting relative. <laughs> so she's just talking to me throughout the entire show. She's like, how are you going? I'm like, I'm, I'm fine, but I've got, a, I've got a job to do. And she's like, you've gotten bigger, which is untrue. I'm the same size as I'm just talking throughout the entire show. And then she turns this woman next to her, hasn't even looked in my direction, just sitting in her chair like this. And she just says, uh, he's handsome, isn't he? <laughs> And this woman who hasn't even looked at me just goes... <laughs> and then just mumbles, too short. Too short! Too short! She didn't know where I am. She didn't even look at me. She didn't, I could be in the fucking distance for sure. She had to it. So this woman thinks I'm a visiting relative. This woman thinks I'm too short. And then there's an old man up the back who's just decided to tut and say no after everything I'm saying. So I continue on with my show with this old man just going, mm, no, 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 no. Continue with the show. I'm a fucking professional. And I go about three quarters of the way through the show. This man still touching and saying no. These women still just talking. This woman still think I'm too short. This woman still just going, how are you going? How's your brother? Obviously not well. He's a meth head. He's gone to jail. Wait, what, what's going on? And about three quarters of the way through the show. And this old woman in the middle of the audience just raises her hand like this. And I say, okay. Yes? And she says, I don't know what's going on. Can you take me home, please? And I say, I think you are home. I don't, I don't know what, what this means. And then, and then the woman who thinks we're visiting real life turns to the woman and just says, press your buzzer low. And then they've got these little buttons hanging around, chains around their necks. And then this woman just presses her button and then a nurse comes in and wheels her away. <laughs> Uh, then can you guess what happens? <laughs> Buttons going off through the entire fucking show to the entire audience is wheeled out of the room. There's three people left. Uh, the woman who thinks I'm a visiting relative, the woman who thinks I'm too short, and the fucking old man saying no. He's decided to stay for the entire of the show. He's going, no, 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 no. I finished the show. So I'm a fucking professional. I'm ready to cry. And I just say at the end of the show, thank you very much. And the woman who thinks I'm a visiting relative, standing ovation from her. Standing ovation, which is amazing because she's in a wheelchair. And as they're taken away, the old woman who thinks I'm too short, the nurse just says, did you enjoy that love? And finally, the woman turns her head and just says, it was better than sitting in my room alone. 